Hi, I'm Morgan Shimabuku, and I'm a research associate at the Pacific Institute. And I'm here with Sarah Derringer, a senior researcher who is working on a project around multiple benefits of water. So Sarah, can you tell me a little bit more first about what are multiple benefits? And then second, what do they have to do with water? Sure. So we use a wide variety of water management strategies to address water challenges, things like flood control or water quality, um, or even making sure there's enough water supply for communities. Um, but because water is so intricately related with other aspects of our environment and society, when we invest in water, there's often these other additional benefits that come along. So things like environmental quality, improving um, the health of our rivers, um, and uh, reducing air pollution, but then also things like community livability or access to green space. Great. So could you maybe provide an example of a project with multiple benefits and or multiple costs? Sure. So there's a category of strategies called green infrastructure. And essentially what that is, is mimicking what the natural environment would do um, in more urban settings. So um, green infrastructure can include things like sustainable landscapes, where we would put in um, native plants, for instance, and healthy soils in order to filter the water and make sure pollution isn't making it to waterways. But in addition to helping filter pollution out, we would also um, maybe use less water because um, they're climate appropriate plants or have um, biodiversity benefits. Um, but the reality is that most water management strategies will come with multiple benefits. So for example, water conservation and efficiency um, measures will actually help us to reduce the amount of energy we need to pump and treat water. Um, and so that's another area where there are multiple benefits. So I understand that the goal of the framework is to provide a more standardized approach. So can you tell us more about the framework and how it can help with this? Sure. So while there's all these different benefits, um, there isn't really a standardized way for us to think about the many different benefits that come from water management, but also the different costs that are associated with those. And what ends up happening is that we'll leave some benefits off or some costs off, and we can't really compare systematically these different projects. Um, and so as a result, we'll have some projects that may have benefits in one area, but not in others. And it makes it really challenging for us to actually pick a project that gives the most benefits. So what our framework does is to um, provide a methodology for looking at all of these different benefits systematically and then allowing you to compare projects. Could you tell me a little bit more about what is actually involved with the framework, what it sort of looks like and the steps that you go through? Yeah, so to develop the framework, we engaged with a large number of stakeholders from um, government agencies, non-governmental organizations, communities, and also with businesses to understand what would a methodology need to look like in order to have multiple benefits and then bring that into decision making. And what we came up with was a three-step process. Um, the first step is really about identifying the broad multiple benefits and multiple costs that come along with a water management project. And one of the things that's unique about this framework is that by having this step first, you open up to all of the quantitative and the qualitative benefits. So we know there's some benefits that we'll be able to put a number on pretty easily, but there's other benefits like community livability or access to education that are going to be more challenging to put a, bene or, um, a quantitative value on. And this lets you really open up and put those all on a level playing field. The second step is to characterize those benefits. So for the quantitative benefits, that means um, putting a real number on it. How much energy are we saving? How much water supply is being produced? But then for the qualitative benefits might be something like a yes, no. It does um, give access to education or yes, it provides access to green space or maybe no, it doesn't. And then the third step is about how do we incorporate those benefits and costs um, into our decision-making processes? How do we know that if we show that there are these benefits and these costs, that that can actually make it to a place where decision-makers say, yes, we want this project, or no, we don't want this project. So how do you see this approach being used? We see a lot of potential applications. One of the ones I'm really excited about is how this framework can be used to engage with community members to help both um, show what are the potential benefits of water management strategies, but then also to engage and understand what the community wants most. So if you're investing in a project and it's possible that you could add in a community benefit, like public safety, let's say, you could use this as a platform for engagement. 
But there's a lot of other um, ways that we see this applying as well. One is for businesses that are interested in um, making sure that when they're doing investments that they're quantifying all of the different benefits they're getting out of it. So let's say um, a business wants to understand um, their water benefits that they're providing for an area, but then also what is the carbon offset that they're able to get. Um, and so we see a lot of ways that this framework could be used both in the public sector and in the private sector. So how are you going to be testing it? Is there any, are there people using it or organizations using it already? Great question. So we're working on two test cases right now. Um, the first one is looking at in Southern California at sustainable landscapes on business um, properties and understanding what are the benefits of sustainable landscapes, both for the business themselves, but then also um, what are the broader community benefits? And the second test case is looking at um, distributed rainwater capture, so things like cisterns or um, rain gardens on residential properties, and what are the benefits to homeowners, but then also for um, the broader community. And that one I'm really excited about because we're using it as a way to understand if city departments can engage with each other um, and in order to invest in a single project. So where can people go to find more information if they want to follow along with the test cases, learn more about the framework and other things like that? On our website, you can find our report, Moving Toward a Multi-Benefit Approach for Water Management. And that report lays out this framework as well as potential applications for it. And on the website as well, you can find an online resource library that has a large number of the literature and websites that we used in order to compile this framework. Great. Well, thank you for talking to me today. Thanks for having me.